Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 5th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Women in the Muslim religion are determining what wearing their hijab means to them. Muslim women in the southern state in India are facing a headscarf ban in schools and colleges where they are being forced to remove their hijabs which is a direct violation of their religious beliefs, while some women in Turkey believe removing their hijabs is a sign of freedom from restriction. According to the Washington Post, women in Turkey are liberating themselves by removing their headscarves or hijabs. In an online platform called You Will Not Walk Alone, Turkish women who uncovered or want to do so pour their hearts out. Booster Sebeki, a 28-year-old journalist, said that at age 19, she showed up in class one day uncovered, and she felt that everyone was looking at her, but no one really cared. She described feeling the wind in her hair for the first time as beautiful. In Turkey, women face immense pressure from relatives who do not want them to uncover. Mothers who don't speak to them for months, fathers who lock them up or take them out of school, some endure beatings. One woman ended up in a mental institution until she finally got her family to honor her wish to uncover. Whether Muslim feel it's their right to wear their hijab to honor their religion, or they decide they want to take it off, the key here is to not force these women to do anything they don't want to do. In other news, a new report by the National Women's Law Center says that Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander women with full-time jobs earn $3,000 less per year than their white male counterparts. This means that if the pay gap between white men and Asian women does not close, an Asian woman starting her career today stands to lose $120,000 over the next 40 years. And that's the best case scenario considering female Burmese, Cambodian, Hmong, and Nepalese employees all stand to lose around $1 million over the course of their careers. How do we equalize the pay gap for Asian women and all women? We need to normalize public salary guidelines for occupations where they are not negotiable and gender is not a factor. A job is a job. When a woman shows up and is equally capable of doing the same job as a man, they should be paid the same. It's common sense. In other news, concerning the impending decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, we got action. This week, Politico published a report that claims to be the opinion of the Supreme Court stating that it would overturn Roe versus Wade. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts confirmed the authenticity of the draft opinion from the court that would overturn abortion rights. Although he said the draft does not represent the court's final decision. Hmm. Then why write it down? The draft of the Supreme Court opinion sent the world of women's rights activism into a tailspin. Even though we've known for quite a while that overturning Roe versus Wade was a possibility, but I think we underestimated its plausibility. If Roe versus Wade is overturned, it will leave the federal government out of protecting access to abortion and all laws concerning abortion access will be left to each state to decide. This means that each state can decide to ban access to abortion and contraceptives as it sees fit. And eight states already have these types of laws in effect right now. Why is access to abortion even a question for the state or the federal government to address or protect? Well, in a patriarchal world, women aren't deemed to be capable of making decisions for ourselves. So the government believes it should make decisions for us. What do women think about the possibility of handing over the right to access to abortion to the states? Let's talk to three feisty women who have something to say about the issue. Today we have Heather R. Bellicosa, a feminist activist and the author of The Punishings, which depicts a world without abortion rights. We also have Leah M. Forney, the CEO of Purposely Faithful Coaching and Consulting Firm and eight times published author. Finally, we have Sam Crunkleton, who currently serves on the board of the Henderson Democratic Club in Nevada, the Nevada Federation of Democratic Women, and she is in the Emerge Nevada class of 2022. 
Welcome to the Feisty Ladies. I am very excited to have you represent the opinions of women everywhere. What do you think about the possibility of Roe versus Wade being overturned this summer? 69% of Americans do not want Roe overturned. So we're being held by a fringe minority um, who is being woven right into the fabric of our society. The lawmakers don't even understand the bills that they're passing. They're just so eager to pass them for their yeah. supporters. They're even passing bills that would prevent the removal of an ectopic pregnancy, which has zero chance of being viable and would just kill the mother if not taken care of. So I like to think of it as like an old argument that gun supporters have, which is they say restricting guns doesn't prevent guns in our society, it prevents legal guns. And if you just take the word guns and replace it with the word abortion, it's the same thing. Yeah. Restricting abortion does not prevent abortion. It prevents legal, safe abortion. I did a lot of research for a book called The Punishings, and all of that is now coming true where people are using herbal remedies. We're going to have to go back to that. We're going to have to go back to Janes, who were women in an underground network who were trying to help people with abortions when they weren't legal. Yeah. And a lot of women were killing themselves over this. And finally, I would like to think that this doesn't stop with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I think this is the start of it. I think that they're taking a book right out of fascism where it's nationalism, machismo, disdain. Yeah intellectualism, the intertwining of religion and government, which has been going on for way too long. And that, I don't think Roe is the end game. I think that Roe is only the beginning. I couldn't agree even more, Heather. Let me tell you something. I, as a black woman and a sexual assault survivor, I am pissed at sh yeah. that they are even thinking about that because what they don't think about is those babies that are conceived as a result of being raped. Yeah. And that is what's pissing me the off because if you're going to overturn Roe versus Wade, then what are you going to do for mothers who have had children conceived out of rape? You're not even thinking about that. And on top of that, you as white America or the government do not have the right to tell me what I can and cannot do with my body. I have a right. It is my choice. And I think overturning Roe versus Wade is a bunch of bullshit. I think we are going to go right back and history is going to start to repeat itself all over again. And it's horrible to think that this is happening right now in 2022. It is absolutely crazy. Absolutely. I, I can't agree with both of you more. Um, and I just want to be very, very clear with everyone here today. The decision to overturn Roe versus Wade by the Supreme Court is unacceptable. It's preposterous. Yeah. It's outrageous. Yes. It's been held president for decades and people's lives literally depend on it. As you guys said before, we're not stopping women from having abortions. We're only ending safe abortions. Yeah. Um, I'm fortunate enough to live here in the state of Nevada where we're considered a safe haven state in terms of access to abortion care. And we'll be, and I know that we're gonna be seeing an influx from neighboring states as their trigger laws go into effect after the Supreme Court decision. Basically now is not the time to sit here quietly and just wait to see what happens. I'm yeah. sick of it. We need to check out the laws in your state, call your elected officials to urge them to take action to codify Roe versus Wade and basically make this decision irrelevant by the Supreme Court. We need to donate to Planned Parenthood, help yeah. spread the word to help find abortion care. Basically, we need to take action now. At the end of the day, women matter. Damn and right, it matter. It's my body to be my choice. I'm tired of being treated as a sick person. I'm sitting and waiting for somebody to make a decision, make a decision choice, for me. I'm intelligent. I'm, I'm capable of knowing how to make a decision for myself and others. I'm not kind of asking for permission, asking for inclusion, asking for equality. Patriarchy is dead and gone, and it's about time we all accept it. When you take away my right to have control over my body, you are treating me like a slave all over again. I am free. It's time for a break. Is Kim Kardashian a bad role model for women? What did a man in Hong Kong do to a woman he claims was bullying him? Answers to these questions right after the break. Don't miss it. Hi, I'm Duffy, the founder of Disguise as Surprise. As a mom of two teenage boys, I got really frustrated when I was starting to wrap their presents because as they got older, the gifts they wanted started coming in very recognizable shaped boxes. Think cell phones, wireless earbuds, video games. If you hand it to them wrapped in that shaped box, they know what it is immediately before they open it. Boring, not okay. So I worked with some local labs and designed a set of dividers that are reusable and made in the USA. You take your dividers and you arrange them inside of a shirt box, either around your one special item to disguise 
or you make sections and you create your own multi-item gift boxes for any occasion throughout the year. Um, the beauty of it is, is the, what I call the universal shirt box mentality. Doesn't matter how old you are. If you get handed a shirt box, you think you're getting close. So when they lift that lid and see something that they really wanted or something way cooler, that's where the excitement comes in. So my mission is to get people to rethink how they give a gift. <laughs> Holy moly, no way, no way, you're kidding me, you're actually kidding me. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the 25 year old man that was arrested by the Hong Kong police in Chen Shui Wai after a caller reported seeing him pushing a wheelbarrow carrying a body down the street in broad daylight? The caller said that she saw legs protruding from the rolled up quilt in the wheelbarrow. Police arrived and arrested him on the spot and later learned that the deceased woman in the wheelbarrow was the man's girlfriend who he had been living with. Their three other roommates were later arrested for helping to conceal the crime and the legal disposal of the body. According to another report, the man said that he was being bullied by his girlfriend. And an investigator spoke to the 25-year-old man's landlord who said that he had many girlfriends who all bullied him in the past, including cheating on him. I'm guessing this time he had enough. But let's take a lesson from this. What do we do when our partners abuse us? We leave them alone. We don't ask them to change. We don't abuse them back. We don't record footage of them to expose them. And we certainly don't kill them. We leave them alone. When we leave them alone, we won't have a victim story to tell. Stop your victim story in its tracks. If someone abuses you, just leave them alone. In other news, Kim Kardashian is arguably the most popular girl in the world right now based on name recognition alone. It's no wonder that every move she makes creates massive headlines as both men and women debate her decisions. This week, Kim shined on the red carpet of the Met Gala wearing a one-of-a-kind dress formerly owned by superstar actress and vixen Marilyn Monroe. Kim got the dress from the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum and is the first person to wear the dress since Marilyn Monroe wore it in 1962. The dress is stunning, but it didn't fit Kim, who said that she was extremely disappointed by that. Because she couldn't alter the dress, she decided to alter herself, and she went on a crash diet and said she lost 16 pounds in three weeks. A crash diet is any kind of weight loss diet with the aim of excluding all or some major food groups in order to achieve rapid weight loss. With so many people watching and imitating her every move, was this crash diet announcement a good idea? According to Net Doctor, crash diets, while useful in the beginning, can cause serious side effects like weakened immune system, dehydration, dizziness, irregular bowel movements, fatigue, irritability, headaches, and hair thinning. Is it that important to look the part of the most popular girl in the world that you risk serious side effects like these? For Kim, I guess it is. It's her job. What bothers me most is that she knows that women and girls are imitating her, yet she still chose to speak on her dangerous journey to weight loss. I guess a woman of her status has something to prove in order to stay on top, and she will go to any lengths to do so. Let's allow Kim to continue to shine on the red carpet, and thankfully, the rest of us, well, we can all order pizza tonight. So glad I'm not the most popular girl. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. feisty. Erica. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women. <laughs>